Hi everybody and welcome to Ruby's Classic Cooking. Today I'm going to make bran muffins. I'm going to make those kind that you make from cereal. That looks kind of like, um, a bit like hamster kibble. But it, they make really delicious muffins and they're supposed to be very healthy and good for you. Which is why they don't look so great, I guess, when you start out. Anyway, so I've got my two cups of bran in here. Now I'm going to do my, um, my metric equivalents in the recipe, which I'm going to put in the description file below. From now on, you'll find all of my recipes in my description file below. And all of my recipes that I have posted so far for all of my videos are in the description file. So anyway, the crucial thing about this recipe that I'm going to tell you right now, you get your two cups of bran in here. Um, and you're going to add a cup and a quarter of milk. Now it says low fat milk in the recipe, but I only buy homogenized 3.25% milk. And you know what? It's butter, little butter fat uh, isn't too horrible for you. So I'm just going to pour that onto my cereal right now. Now the crucial part about this recipe that you have to remember is you want to leave this sitting here in this milk, in the milk and cereal together, leave that sit for 20 minutes. It lets your cereal absorb and soften the, with the milk. Then you come back and finish the recipe, which I'm only going to use these to make today. I don't need a big fancy mixer to do this. Um, it's a very easy recipe to do. Now, moving on with my recipe, I've got a cup and a quarter of, of all-purpose flour in yeah. here. I have a tablespoon of baking powder, baking powder, not baking soda, in here. I have got a quarter of a spoonful of salt in here, a half a cup of sugar, and a heaping three quarters cups of raisins because I like to put raisins in my bran muffins. It adds a little flavor to them. Oh yes, and don't forget the egg. I also have my muffin tin over here. Well, it's not a tin, it's a stoneware pan, but you probably have a muffin tin with 12 holders. So I put papers in here because it just makes the cleanup easier, but sometimes I don't bother. I used to have metal muffin tins, but they rusted. And I got the stoneware one, so I, uh, that's what I use. Oh yes, and a quarter of a cup of vegetable oil over here. So those are all my ingredients. This is going to sit for 20 minutes, and I'll come back after it's soaked up, and I'll show you what it looks like when you go to use, uh, you know, go to combine it with the rest of your ingredients. I now have had my cereal and my milk soaking here for 20 minutes, which I'm going to show you. Now see how that looks kind of like mush, like a big mushy mess here. You know, but that's definitely not cereal sitting in milk. That is definitely now a different ingredient to work with. Okay, put that to one side for the moment. All right, I'm going to mix my one and a quarter cups of flour, which I have in here, with my half cup of sugar already here on top of here. And add a quarter of a teaspoon of salt and one tablespoon of baking powder. A lot of baking powder, but anyway, in it goes. And it says to combine these together. So I'm just going to combine these together a little bit here in my bowl. And just uh, mix them together here a bit. I'm not really going to have to go serious about this. I'm just going to kind of stir them together a bit. There we go. Okay, now what am I supposed to do? And set aside. <laughs> a helpful recipe. Okay. Now I've done my cereal. Now I'm going to add my egg and my oil to this. So here's my quarter cup vegetable oil in my nifty liquid measuring thing. There we go. That side. And my egg. This happens to be a grade A extra large this time. That's what I bought this time was grade A extra large. So in it goes. Oops. I'm going to break it in this little side bowl that I had the sh uh, baking powder in because I'm afraid I don't want to get any shells in here. There we go. Reduce, recycle, and reuse, you know. All right, and there was a little piece of shell there, so I'm glad I did that. Anyway, okay. Okay, so oil and egg. Mix those together with this. This is such a simple recipe. I just use my, measure my mixing spoon 
my, my wooden spoon and my big glass pitcher to mix it up in. Okay. Well, that's about mixed to, mixed together as it needs to get. Now what do I do? All right, add my flour mixture. Mixing only until just combined. So all of these, the sugar and flour, it all goes in there. One big dump. And I'm just going to stir this together until just combined. Now that, that means don't beat it to pieces. It just means stir it around gently until you have your flour. You can't see your flour mixture anymore. You don't want to toughen your, muff your muffins. You don't want to develop the gluten in your in your muffins too much. You just want to combine it in here. You don't want streaks of raw flour, but you don't want, you know, you're not kneading bread here. <laughs> you're just stirring here just gently. Oh, by the way, I've had two or three people say to me, Ruby, why do you have two coffee pots in your kitchen? Well, you know, I don't have two coffee pots in my kitchen. I have two coffee makers, yes. And this one is for coffee and this one is for tea because my husband and I like to drink tea but we also like to drink coffee so we've made tea for years in in a teapot with tea you know tea bags and so on and then you get to drink about drink about half the pot and the tea's gone cold so one day my husband said you know these things have a heating element in the bottom of them you know, if you put water in the back of that, like you do for coffee, and instead of putting coffee in it in a brand new machine, you put tea bags in the pot, and the hot water, which is very nearly boiling, pours into your tea bags and makes your tea. And guess what? The little element on the bottom keeps your tea at the right temperature. It doesn't boil. Because <laughs> boiled tea is kind of gross myself, I think. Maybe some people like it, but I don't really care for it myself. Anyway, so that's my teapot. <laughs> Just in case you're wondering. I'm also going to add in here at this point three, a heaping three quarters of a cup of raisins because I like raisins in my brand muffins. I don't like them to be too plain after all. We're eating these for our health, right? <laughs> brand muffins are good for you. And so are raisins. Raisins are good for you. They're filled with iron. They also have a good deal of sugar in them too, but you know. Man, this is not going to be a very liquid batter, is it? This is really very stiff this morning. I don't know why. I think I need to add a bit more milk to this mixture. Hmm. These are pretty stuff mu stiff muffins. I'm not sure if they're going to integrate all the flour or not. Hmm. Well, I've made this recipe before, and they turn out to be delicious muffins. So, I think I'm, I think I'll leave well enough alone this morning. <laughs> I won't mess with it. Usually, my muffin batter is a bit more liquid than this. I haven't made these in a while, but every now and then you have a desire to have something to eat you haven't had in a while. So, I haven't had brand muffins in a while. And I thought, why not make some? Okay, I've got all my flour up from the bottom of the bowl. I do. And this eight cup measuring cup, measuring, measuring, measuring cup, uh, sorry. This eight cup measuring cup does a great job of mixing up your muffins. It's um, the two liters the size, so you know, it's a good size for mixing up a batch of muffins. So I didn't have to get out of measuring. See, see how I saved dirty dishes? I had my measuring spoons. And I normally wouldn't use these. That's just, I'm just doing that for you guys. <laughs> I normally wouldn't use these little bowls to put my salt and sugar and so on in. There, okay. I think that's about as integrated as it needs to be. So I saved dirty dishes by using the pitcher to measure my cereal and my milk and to leave it to sit and then to do the rest of my mixing in. So now I'm just going to scoop these up. I've got my, my scoop. This is a large size one. I think it holds. Um, 
three quarters of a cup, I believe. And this is just, this is a cookie scoop. It's not a, uh, or a muffin scoop. It's not a, uh, it's not a scoop for ice cream. It looks like one, but it's not. Okay. Just going to scoop these in here. And I got nice, consistent muffins. And also, I end up getting less batter on the sides of my muffin tin as I'm putting it in. If it's going to fit in the scoop like that. And this batch makes 12 muffins, so I'm going to make my 12 muffins. And hopefully, they'll all have a nice amount of raisins in them. I'm sure they will. I think that first one might need a bit more dough in it. So I get these all scooped in here. And then they're going to pop into my 400 preheated 400 degree oven for um, <laughs> 20 to 25 minutes. So I'm using this uh, stoneware pan. So I'll put them in for 25 minutes because otherwise they won't be cooked. Because in a steel pan they heat up. In a metal pan they heat up faster than they do in the stoneware. But the stoneware holds the heat. So it's sort of a on the one hand, it cooks your muffins really nicely, but on the other hand, you have to be, you have to leave them in a little longer. But that's okay. That's okay. I don't mind about that part of it. So, yep. Okay. Yeah, I've got a little bit of batter dough left because I think my first ones are a little bit smaller than the later ones. Wait till it. Didn't quite fill it up as full. So I'm gonna spread these around. I know what my problem is. Maybe I got a little carried away with the brand cereal this morning when I was putting these in here. <laughs> so I seem to have enough batter here. I could have made a couple more muffins out of this. Now these muffins are not gonna cost you two bucks a piece either. So you know, an egg, a cup and a quarter of flour. Baking powder, salt, a little bit of salt, you know, oil, even three quarters of a cup of raisins. They are not nearly as expensive as if you went out to buy a, a dozen, and I have a dozen muffins here. If you went out to the store to buy a dozen muffins, what would you pay? And right now, during inflationary times, we have to be watching our budgets for food and saving money wherever and however we can. And uh, <laughs> guess what? Last night, the price of diesel went up to two, went up 27 cents. So it's now 226, 227 for a liter, a liter of diesel. And for you Americans watching, a liter is about four liters make about a American gallon of gas. So that's like 260, 220, 227, yeah, 227 times four for a gallon of diesel. So you know what that's going to do to our grocery prices in the store because every single thing that comes to us here in Nova Scotia comes by truck. And guess what? Trucks run on diesel. That's I'm going to pop these in the oven now. And I'll be back and show you them when they're all cooked and ready to eat. And I'll put some out and have some pictures of my lovely finished muffins. Hi out there again once again. And my muffins are now out of the oven. It's been 25 minutes and they're all cooked and gorgeous looking. So I'm just going to dump them out here. Hopefully they won't go flying off of the floor on me or something like that. Anyway, there we go. Yeah, let's go. Come on, guys. Here's my muffins, all golden brown from the oven. And I hope you tried this recipe. And let me know how your bran muffins turn out for you. I hope they turn out delicious. I'm sure these are going to be wonderful. I can't wait to butter one up and have, have a muffin with my tea for, for lunch. Well, anyway, I'm going to leave you now. And I hope you come back and watch me the next time on Ruby's Classic Cooking. Bye for now.